if we don't get a lot of typing questions, it will just be all Brent Ozark reviewing his recent cruise because that's what I want to hear about. Dun, 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 dun. The only reason I'm here, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> we had never taken a cruise out of San Diego, so I mean, we moved here, and it had never even occurred to us to take a cruise out of San Diego. And then we we decided to plan a Hawaii one in like December. But I was totally burned out and stressed out like, I don't know, a month ago. And it was, it was the Black Friday sales when all the Black Friday customer support was going on. Um, just I was just <laughs> burned out. Oh, I was frustrated. And uh, so Erica finally, she's like, oh, my God, you're so stressed out. We need to get you out of here. And so the, there was a uh, San Diego cruise down to Mexico. And it didn't even matter where we were going, just like my happy place is on a cruise ship. So we just got on a cruise ship and F it, just went out of here. And it's, Tara, what cruise line are you taking for your uh, your Mexican Riviera cruise? Do you remember? It's the Walmart line. It's <laughs> Carnival. Carnival. Okay, all right. So you, you're fine. It's I was on Holland America, which is like the Geritol line. It's <laughs> the oldest people you could imagine. A huge percentage of walkers and wheelchairs and you know lots of mobility issues and. Uh, well, they're awake the same hours as you though. This is true. There are people down there in walkers like 4 a.m. going, where? how come we the pastries aren't out yet? <laughs> it was perfect. Uh, but, yeah, in terms of a review, I would not recommend Holland America if you're young enough to feel, or unless you want to feel like you're really young compared to everyone else. <laughs> would, if if you're not collecting Social Security, this is not the cruise line yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. A lot of retirees. There was a <laughs> wonderful 80-some-year-old couple that we sat with at one night at dinner. Just had a wonderful time, and they were, like, totally young at heart. Uh, but they were 80s. I mean, there was no getting around it. There was, you know, one of them would leave to go uh, back to their room because he's like, it's going to take me 20 minutes to get there from here, you know, whereas my wife only takes five minutes to get there. So I just go ahead and go so that I have a head start. I'm like, oh, my God, wow. Yeah, we're we're lucky people. Tammy asks, "What are your all's New Year's resolutions?" Oh boy! All right, who wants to go first? <laughs> Tara goes, "No, I don't have any." I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, zero. No. I mean, get back home, but I mean, is that <laughs> really new? One. Is that when? When's the, when are you supposed to get back home now? At this point. Look, you we still laugh if I say that. March, and it doesn't happen. No, <laughs> oh, when was it originally? Wasn't it originally supposed to be you were in by the holidays? Four months. We yeah. were we were talking about before Thanksgiving, mm. and it's it, again. It's it, there's been a week that's gone by, even during the holidays, that work has not been has been done, right? It, but it's just it's it's just not very construction fast. There and there's been issues, and it's just. I, I haven't made a payment in like two months, so I'm okay with that. But they haven't done much in two months, so. Is there a correlation there? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're not doing work, then I'm not giving you. I'm paying. I'm not paying for it, right? So. Oh, I, I I don't I don't know I don't exactly know how the trades work. They they usually are weird about money. Yeah, well, I mean, the contractor's handing all that, so that's that's great. I'm not having to deal with multiple contractors, but. You know, there's there's you know things that just been popped up. Oh well, you know we need to get new AC, and well, well that's a whole new group of schlubs that need to come in and 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 do that work. And uh, the plumber has been on vacation for like over a month now, and so he's brought in a few of his guys in, so they've had to restart like four times on that. And so it's just it's almost like a comedy of errors, you know. I, I feel like this is like much ado about nothing, you know. I'm at the part right now where Hero's dead, right? So, God. my New Year's resolution was supposed to be, I was trying to stay below 190 pounds for six months straight, and the six-month goal was supposed to be January 22nd, and I blew over it during the cruise, so I'm up at like 192, so get to restart that again, so that's my new resolution. Yeah, two, two pounds is easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 but it's the staying there. Oh, yeah, sure. Chocolate and tequila <laughs> and tortillas and donuts and we live in a wonderful world. I love I love our world, especially when you're on a boat with your flippy floppies. Yes, yes. All right, let's see. We'll go through our uh, questions here. Mark asks, 
should I have a pre-made destination database in order to run SP Database Restore, or does it create one itself? Well, I mean, the restore should create the database. Yeah. If, if it's not, then you've got other, other things going on. Perhaps, I don't know, like a lack of permissions or... If the, if the database already exists, maybe you're trying to overwrite it. I don't know. Is that's a, a that's an odd one. Or users have it open for a query, maybe. Right, right. Yeah, no, you don't. In a perfect world, you don't want to have the database already there when you go to restore. No. Uh, Pablo asks, what do you all think about restoring production statistics on development servers in order to try to simulate production's behavior? Have you all ever moved statistics from one server to another? Uh, yeah, but like as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of, like, what the hell kind of joke is that? <laughs> like I was messing with someone, but like I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. I, I, no, I, like uh, I, I mean I, I like the idea of it, but I, I, I mean practically, uh, I think you lose out on some aspects of being able to tune queries uh, mm -hmm. when when you do that. You know, like you just don't have the the volume of data in there, and uh, you miss some miss out on some of like the metrics that uh, might be making queries weird somewhere else, or might be making them interesting at somewhere else. Yeah, it's better than you nothing. Also, yeah, you also need developers to know what to do with that information. So they're creating uh, queries with these statistics that um, are for another system, and they can't figure out why everything is so slow. And um, they may just go ahead and reset the stats, or just rebuild indexes all over the place, and then you've got it on a kind of whack a little bit. So they have to understand what statistics are and how you use them and how SQL Server uses them, and go through all that. Um, so if you were willing to teach them about that, then by all means, yeah, go and do once that. Once you rebuild indexes, everything goes away. Yeah, I prefer, you know, creating queries and testing them on real data sizes, right? If I'm doing any sort of perf type type stuff. If I'm not, then, you know, we'll just we'll we'll, we'll wait till we get into the real thing and we'll we'll tune it from there. I never understood it, the moving of statistics around, because all statistics are used for is for estimated plans. <laughs> You know that you're going to get a good picture of estimate. I mean, sure, they're they're used for actual plans too, but all you're going to be doing is comparing estimated plans. And if the estimates were right, you probably wouldn't be in trouble to begin with. Usually, the the way queries go to hell in a handbasket is where the estimates are wrong in plans, and where stats aren't helping you. Non-sargeable queries, you know, people doing L trim, R trim, stuff like that. Or like you know, if you're dealing with like spills or just some other weird like you know. Some other weird problem like you know, this, locking. Lots of yeah, lots of stuff that you know, just uh, you know, not, not only having the statistics won't help you figure out. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're like, unless you're truly troubleshooting like uh, like a cardinality estimation issue, like purely that, then mm, uh, yeah. yeah, the value kind of dive bombs. Tishal asks, configure or Kerber, who, blah, 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 Kerberos Config Manager tells me I have duplicate SPNs. Have y'all used the tool Kerberos Config Manager to get rid of the duplicates? I, I've never never done that, but I've certainly dealt with the duplicate SPNs, and I just use the command line. I mean, it's just so simple to do. Um, you know, set SPN whatever it is. That's uh, I, I just have one bookmark set up for set SPN, and then I always just end up going here. From 2008. <laughs> oh that, no! Oh no! There goes your bookmark. <laughs> Just set, set SPN slash question mark in the command line. <laughs> It'll tell you what you need to do. <laughs> Damn it. I only had one. Oh, there's a, oh, no, there's another one. Now you need to go the way back oh, machine. Robert Davis, Robert Davis kind of works. Yeah, so if you search for set SPN Robert Davis, that'll get you that there too. Um, all right, let's see here. Back over on the questions. Edwin asks, what are the tool, and I'm laughing not at Edwin's question. I'm laughing at me, my one bookmark is trash. You know, not <laughs> Edwin says, what are the tools or T-SQL scripts that I can use to detect all SQL servers in my production environment? Ooh, Microsoft has that discovery tool. Yeah. That's the only one. Uh, I, I know that like there used to be PowerShell scripts out there that would go and like search the network and catalog stuff, but I I couldn't tell you the name of them or who wrote them. The one that Kendall wrote, I forget yeah. the name. Of it. Oh yeah, Power Drive something. Somebody knows. Yeah. PowerDoc on CodePlex, which of course yeah, is that's dead. It. When's the last um, time that thing got updated? You know, he he did like a year ago. A year ago, he updated something in yeah. here, but of course, I don't know if it was that he moved it to. 
uh, GitHub or not. There's somebody else who moved it to Brian. And I, but yeah, SQL Power Doc is another one. Yeah. Quest had Discovery Wizard. I don't know if they still do or not. <laughs> Wizard. So, so if if the software is completed, why do we need to update it? So, <laughs> software is never completed. Says that I'm, the developer confuses me there for a second. I'm like, what, what, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie says, can you give me a brief overview of the functions involved in SQL Server performance monitoring? What data or information am I analyzing to determine if SQL Server is performing better today than it was yesterday or last week? Ooh. That's a good question. How do you know if your SQL Server is better or worse? Oh, the way it smells. Yeah. Describe what a high-performance SQL Server smells like when things are bad. Burning dust. Uh, what I usually do is lick a thumb and put it up against the compute the CPU fans, and if it feels like it was blowing harder than last week, I know something is something is a problem. I, I've probably been running queries in the application instead of SSMS. Makes sense. When we talk about a SQL Server and we say it really sucks or it blows, that's mm -hmm. the thing that we're talking about there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's when I know it's time to ask Brent for more RAM. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, Tara, do you have a better answer? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, for me, a lot of it's going to be based upon users. You know, if no one's contacting me, then I know that you know, its performance is either fine or tolerable, and when, when they are contacting me, it's because it's bad. You know, I, I, at the, at my, at the you know, three past jobs, I always had expensive monitoring tools in place that made it easy you know, to take a look at that stuff. <laughs> you know, there's a dashboard, you can see it, and you know, bells and whistles all over the place. <laughs> yes, and if you were going to go pick a monitoring tool, what are some of our favorite monitoring tools out there? Oh, I like the old Sentry one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice one. It's got a nice, a nice dashboard. You can, I like that you can like highlight sections of, you know, the graph and zoom into like what was running then, or, you know, what like what other stuff was going on. So that's nice, nice little things that like help you like, you know, correlate things that are actually happening on the server. I find that uh, a lot of monitoring tools have sort of disparate information, where it's really hard to like put put the puzzle pieces together. It's like there are weights and there are queries and there's a graph and there's some plaid pants, and you're like, I don't really know which one to go with. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, like I think the same way when you talk about functions what a monitoring tool is supposed to do for me I want to be able to isolate units of time show me what it was like at 8 a.m. Tuesday alright now what was it like at 8 a.m. Tuesday three weeks ago and it shouldn't just be based on clock time or day of week sometimes it's based on business processes when was the close of month last time or you have bursty loads that happen at different times depending on what was going on or you want to see what was going on I think the whole functionality of, of time replay is huge. Because like you know, if you're if you're just picking at wait stats uh, as your sir as like you know as things are happening, you're gonna lose all the like granularity that monitoring tools collect for you. Like they're like they just aggregate and aggregate and aggregate. They're not per database. They're not like for any window of time. And especially for bursty workloads, servers can look really really bored. When they just have like a you know two or three busy hours a day or like four to six busy hours a day because it just kind of like blurs out over time it just kind of like smooths that line out so. Mike asks, I found a 26 gig index on a 32 gig table. <laughs> it has this index has 28 includes and two of them are Vercare Max. Uh, this smells bad to me. Where do I start? Drop index. Uh, do, do, do you need me to spell one of those for you? D R O P space. Uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, so that that smells to me like it either has D T A in the name or it's going to be name of missing index sys name. Mm -hmm. I would I would put a guess on one of those. That sounds like uh, that sounds like one of the the missing index request things that comes in where you're just like, oh, I should never add that, but not everyone realizes that there are downsides to creating. That being said, if it's there's one other index on the table and it's that big, screw it. Like if it's like the clustered index and then that, I would just leave it alone. Um, the, the other thing you could look at is can you just create the index without all the includes? Just create it with just the key fields? And if it's being used a lot, then that, that can uh, end up helping you there. Mike says, or crazy developers. I think Kind of by definition, you have to be crazy to be a developer. It's 
it's or development drives you crazy because there's so much debugging work involved. Holy moly! It, it, I mean, like Eric said, it smells of you know, being a, um, a missing index, um, f maybe for an entity framework type query, where by default they just return all columns, and that's what you're going to get for a missing index. Yeah, and folks, the moral are... equivalent of select star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And folks, y'all are that's all the technical questions y'all have this week. So y'all are off to a slow start. I'll give you another minute or two to uh, see if you want to enter in any other technical questions. Otherwise, we will disappear off into eating our Christmas leftovers. What did y'all do for uh, Christmas? Did you y'all uh, do home food? Did you go out somewhere? We I, I, ho I, I hosted Christmas Eve um, for 20 people or so. I spent. What? You know, 20 people. I have a big family. Yeah, we're Catholic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's what happens when you get a new house. You have enough space. Everybody's exactly. like, yeah. 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 And then Christmas well, Day with my sisters. That that sounds that doesn't sound like Christmas. That sounds like Noche Buena. <laughs> Where do you come from? Oh, oh, okay. Well, come on in. That's the tone. Come on. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with us this week, and we will see y'all next week at office hours. Adios. <laughs>